Put on that extra 30 pounds. Third and two from the 45. And the give to Culver, the fresh fumble for the touchdown. He fumbled the ball, and who's got it? Second time today, the ball is on the ground, and it looks like Notre Dame has recovered again. Tim Ryan, the guard. Oh, that's, and they fumbled forward for another first down. Both times, the ball going forward for first down yardage, and both times, someone in the same uniform color getting the ball. Ryan, on the left-hand side of your screen, on the ground as that ball pops loose, a chance right there by Bo, Bo Orlando, number 22, but the ball slipped underneath him, and Ryan was able to get on it. Freshman Steve Grant, number four, forced the fumble. First down, Irish. Bryce hit, but does not go down until he picks up three. Fine play by Pat Marlette, number 95. Average size of these two offensive lines compared with the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll see them against Buffalo on NBC next Sunday. It shows you how big these young lads are. Well, they are not small. And I mentioned the strength of this West Virginia team, but the Irish themselves have a very, very good strength program and some strong players on their side of the line as well. Fast moving first half, 345 remaining. And now Rice down the middle has a wide open. Number 22, Anthony Johnson fumbles, but was he down? He was down. They point to the spot. Anthony Johnson having a big day so far here today. That's got to be exciting for a young man who grew up in South Bend and worked as a, a messenger for the ushers in the stadium had a chance to watch the Irish play through his life and dream of one day putting on that golden helmet. Well, here he is, a chance to help his team to a national title, and so far, so good. His brother Mike was a walk-on linebacker at Notre Dame, preceding him. The Irish on the move with a 16-3 lead. Rice again. Well, he consistently breaks out of the initial hit, and finally it's Steve Grant, a freshman from Miami, who secures him. Dick, one of the things that Lou Holtz really believes in is making it tough on his quarterbacks in practice. Uh, he really growls at them. He's up in their face. And his philosophy is very simple. He said, I want to make it so tough in practice that when they get in the game, it's a piece of cake. Second down and nine. <laughs> and a whistle, and that could be delayed. Yeah, I believe it's too much time. Dead ball, ball start, oh. offense, still second down. Somebody getting an early jump. Looks like uh, Andy Heck was a little twitchy there at left tackle. 31 yard line, they set the ball. Let's see if we can see who is getting the move now. It's the right guard getting the move. Is that Ryan in there? Tim Ryan or Tim Grunard? Gunnar. So second down, a short 14. There's Rice. Rice. And well read on the corner, Scott Summits. We have not seen as much of the option as we anticipated. Both of these teams coming in. That was the mainstay of their offensive diet. We have not seen very much of it. We did see it there on a good play by West Virginia's defense to shut it down for a short game. The Lou Holtz figures this is the time of his life. Said never had a hole in one. He's an avid golfer until last year he got two of them. Said, what did your friend say? Said, uh, press. <laughs> <laughs> well, no pressing here. On third and long, Rice. To Ismail for a touchdown. Threaded through several West Virginia hands to the rocket. And he shot into the end zone with a 29-yard score. And the Irish are really celebrating the new year. Tony Rice, who had seen so many articles written and had so often been asked about his passing ability, has answered the critics today. Reggie Ho tries the point after. 
And the Irish lead 23 to 3, going 63 yards in eight plays. Tony Rice with a clothesline throw to the Rocket Ismail for the score. The Rocket Ismail. Just moments ago, shouting, hello, Wilkes-Barre. Hey, His mother is celebrating her birthday today. He said, I'm playing. Tony Rice's mother is celebrating the birthday. The man who threw the ball to Ismail and said, uh, you usually see those kids in the sidelines saying, hi, Mom. Well, Tony Rice will get his chance to wish uh, Mom a happy birthday. I think he already has. Napoleon. the 13 and he returns just to the 30 and a flag is down tackle made by Grimm of Notre Dame we may have had a block below the waist one forty three remaining in the half the penalty will push the Mountaineers even deeper back all the officials from the Southwest Conference, Frank Shepard, the referee, Mrs. Voss, Coleman, Underwood, Moore, Lewis, and Evans. Stepping on the run back. First down. Now that'll take it back to the 17-yard line, and not much time for Major Harris. 143, trailing 23 to 3. And we have a timeout. A reminder, later in today's game, we'll be selecting the most valuable player, Sunkist. We'll donate $2,500 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Arizona in his name. Now you expect the Mountaineers to put the ball in the air now, and the Irish loosen their deep defense. Instead, it's a draw to Taylor, the fullback, and he just gets a few. Shy of the 20, met by Don Grimm, a sophomore linebacker from Scottsdale, Pennsylvania. One of the things that Barry Alvarez's defense has done is basically to play through most of this first half with just four defensive backs. That means a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, and it's been very effective. Harris gets away from Stams, then throws to the 30 and a first down to wide receiver Grantis Bell. His first catch, he's from Fort Lauderdale. No huddle, 115 to go. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. 11 yards on that pass. Major Harris getting an audible call out to his wide receivers. The big man we talked about, Reggie Rembert, right here, matched up with Todd White. Speed on speed. Good protection. Now it breaks down. Now the throw, and incomplete. It is intercepted or the ball hit the ground. Wes Pritchett says he caught the ball, but the official says, uh-uh, the ball hit the ground first. Arnold Ali, a freshman from Carson, California, was right on the receiver, and then Pritchett, along with the Stonebreaker and, and Stams, uh, the three amigos, they got a great sense of humor. He'll, he'll talk about that one. That pass should have been caught right into the hands of Taylor, and Dick, let's watch as it touches the ground right there. Good call by the officials. It's quite possible that Major Harris may have a problem with his left shoulder. I noticed as he ran onto the field, he wasn't pumping that arm at all, kind of holding it tight to his shoulder. We'll keep an eye on him. There's a throw to the sidelines and an immediate hit on Grantis Bell by Stan Smagala. Final minute of the first half, 23-3 Notre Dame. Mountaineers frantically trying to get something before the gun that ends this half. Third down. Not calling a timeout for some reason. Up the middle to the 40 goes fullback Taylor. Pritchett makes the stops. It's very close to a first down. And now the signal given. First down, West Virginia. They have three timeouts left, but for some reason. Well, that'll first, stop the clock as they move the chains. But uh, then it started as soon as they're in place. 32 seconds, you'd think that they would be getting them called at this point. Now the clock starts. Harris going deep for Bell, incomplete. He was out of bounds anyway, and good coverage by Terrell and Smagala. 
Magala with 4-3-5 speed and a 40, and Terrell with 4-3-4 speed. Kind of difficult to outrun those folks. And I think that's the frustration that Don Nealon is facing right now. I don't believe that West Virginia has faced this kind of speed anywhere on their schedule, and they're having real difficulty coping with it. Barry Alvarez, very proud of his defense, and the slowest man on this defensive team, George Williams, a tackle at 282 pounds, runs a five-flat 40. Dick, mm. these guys can fly. And the NFL teams uh, can't boast of that kind of defensive speed. Harris with a flip to his tight end, Keith Wynn, and Wynn is dragged down at the 50-yard line, goes out of bounds, stops the clock 13 seconds. But uh, those little short gainers aren't going to do it for West Virginia. They need one big play here if they're going to add to their three points of the first half. Not good numbers for Major Harris. Has had a very effective year of passing, and his forte is the long ball. They've been able to get the big gainers, but they have not found those openings against this Notre Dame defense today. See that uh, defense looking for the long ball now as they drift back. Three man rush. And now stands on a delayed blitz. Harris on the run, throwing for Rembert. They finally found Rembert at the 14 yard line. And with four seconds left, West Virginia at least in position to try a field goal. They'll call timeout. Well, every third time that Rembert has touched the ball, there's been a touchdown. He's had seven out of 21. This one does not go for the TD, but does put them in position to go for some points. And with a timeout, four seconds to go in the half. We'll return to see if they go for six. Chance to watch the delayed blitz by Stams, and there's Rembert drifting across the field. Scramble by Major Harris and finally unloads the football. Pat Terrell, 15, there to dump him out of bounds. And it would appear that the decision by Don Nealon is to go for the six points, to go for the touchdown. Boy, huh? No, here it comes. Okay, so now they've changed their mind. That's a pretty tough one from the 14, one shot of the touchdown. So they're going to go for the three and head into the locker room with another score at least. Well, they want some points on the board. And this is this is a veteran team. They've been around a long time. They've got a lot of experience. They believe in themselves. 31-yard attempt by Bauman is right in the middle. And that's the end of the first half. A half in which Notre Dame showed its firepower and the Irish flexed its muscles defensively, stopping the nation's number two scoring team, West Virginia second only to Oklahoma State, and allowing them just a pair of field goals. 23 to three, now 23 to six at the intermission. Let's go to Reggie Rucker. You, you started to move the ball, Coach. Was your team tight to begin the game? Well, I don't know, Reg. We got the poor field position. The major got hurt on the first play of the game, and he's not uh, operating quite like uh, he normally does, so it's a little bit of a problem. But we're going to have to move a lot better. Are there some things you could see that you can do against Notre Dame in the second half? Well, we hope so. They're playing real well. We're not playing very good. We're not playing aggressive enough, so we're going to have to get more aggressive. What can you say to him in the locker room? Well, we better start playing like we know how. Thank you. All right, and there's the word that uh, Major Harris, what a tough break for the Mountaineers, was injured, not seriously enough to take him out of the game, but is feeling some pain and is not 100% hurt in the first play of the game. The Notre Dame Irish, 23, the Mountaineers of West Virginia 6 will be back after these messages from your local station. Hello, welcome back to our studios in New York. Championship Monday continues here on NBC. Gail Gardner along with Jimmy Cephalo and Don Shula. And we are at halftime of the Fiesta Bowl with Notre Dame leading West Virginia by the score of 23 to 6. Now earlier today on NBC, you saw Syracuse defeat LSU in the Hall of Fame Bowl. The final score there was 23 to 10. And the Orange setting the tone early in that one. The opening drive for them. Robert Drummond gets the handoff, goes in from three yards out. Drummond 122 yards on the day. Later, LSU gambles fourth and one on the 11. Victor Jones, though, is stuck as the Orange shut down the Tigers' offense, and they win 
the Hall of Fame Bowl. The final score again was 23 to 10. Meanwhile, at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, UCLA, Terry Donahue win their seventh straight bowl game, and that is an NCAA record, beating Arkansas 17 to 3. This is their top quarterback, Troy Aikman, and he hits sophomore tight end Corwin Anthony from two yards out. UCLA over Arkansas 17 to 3 in the Cotton Bowl, holding the Razorbacks to just 44 yards of total offense. In Orlando, the lowest scoring Citrus Bowl in 31 years as Clemson defeats Oklahoma 13 to 6. Now, late in the game, the Sooners with a chance to try to pull this one out deep in Clemson territory. And watch quarterback Jamel Holloway. He is being pressed. He's scrambling, scrambling, looking to the end zone. And he does manage to get it away, but his pass to Damon Stell is knocked away. 13-6, the final as the Tigers win the Citrus Bowl. The Sooners now on probation for the next two years, so this is their last bowl game for two years. And another game going on right now, the Rose Bowl in Pasadena at the Michigan Wolverines, the USC Trojans. USC now leading that game by the score of 14-3. to uh, Michigan with a 49-yard field goal from Mike Gillette and USC with two Rodney Pete touchdowns. And of course, coming up later tonight on NBC, the 55th annual Orange Bowl, Miami Hurricanes hoping circumstances will give them a shot at being number one. For more on the Miami-Nebraska showdown, here... Getting ready for the second half. West Virginia in white and uh, a time where Don Nealon had to appeal to all of their offensive weaponry and it is a team that can score often and can score from any part of the field but uh, the big question mark will be the shoulder of Major Harris and Lou Holtz he's <laughs> with one minute to go he'll still say we're we haven't won this yet if you were up a hundred to nothing well, they're not up a hundred to nothing but they certainly have dominated in the first half the statistics will bear that out and they have not needed the turnover which was the book big tool they used against Miami and SC have been able to do it with great defensive pressure on the West Virginia offense and with a relentless offense that has been very very productive two to one the Irish offensively over Don Nealon's team uh, in case Nealon does have to go to the backup quarterback number seven Greg Jones he is even a stronger passer than Major Harris, but he doesn't have the versatility nor the experience with the offense. I think the key word there is experience, and that decision by Lou Holtz to defer, they won the toss, they decided to put their stronger unit on the field, the defense that has paid such big dividends, and there is Jones, the backup quarterback, and they're acting as if he might be coming in the way his uh, teammates are coming over to him. Well, he may be the man who's going to be called on, and if that injury is sit serious enough to Major Harris. But the other thing that's interesting, when you see a backup quarterback go onto the field, very often there's a letdown by the defense. I don't know why, it just happens. Let's see if perhaps that won't be the case here. I'm sure that would be welcomed by all the West Virginia fans. There's the rocket Ismail. He had a touchdown reception in the first half, 29 yards. Short and Bauman's kick is to the side, trying to keep it away from Ismail, and they just lateral it back to him. And he's out to the 33, and that's all. Waters, number five, the first man there. Braxton Banks caught the ball and quickly got it back to someone who can run a little faster. In the first half, in case you're just joining us, the Irish were very productive. Five possessions. Three touchdowns, a field goal, and only once were they held on downs. And that was when they were inside their own 10-yard line. And much of that success due to Tony Rice both running and especially throwing the football. Rice gives to Mark Green, and the senior on first down is out to the 38-yard line. Orlando and Drumgoul, the safety men, make the tackle. Major Harris yards per completion or oh, 19 a completion throughout the course of 88 13 6 today and Tony Rice hitting the big numbers Boy, look at those yard numbers average. for the day that's the patterns have been open every pass has been over the middle he hasn't worked the sidelines at all they've uh, found the openings right down the middle Ismail and Eilers to the right they hand off to Brooks and he's met solidly at the line of scrimmage the Ellis 
junior inside linebacker with a good pop. Robert Pickett was there as well and Orlando. So third down Notre Dame and about three. In comes Green with the play. Brooks goes out. His first possession of the second half really sets the tempo for the next 30 minutes. So for West Virginia's defense, the challenge is there. Rice keeps, tosses to Green. And on the option, the Irish have the first down at the 44-yard line. Drum goal. And Orlando, the tackler, is a six-yard gain. Green, who is a basketball star in high school in Riverside, California, he played behind a pretty good shooter, Reggie Miller, the All-America at UCLA. He says, in fact, he says that's his favorite sport, basketball. And there's Major Harris. Apparently, they've attended to whatever the injury might be. We've tried to get some confirmation of the injury, of what it is, and its seriousness. No one has been able to locate that yet. Green finally tripped up. Dale Jackson, 93, in an outside linebacker, able to make the stop. He's from Canton, Ohio. Home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, Harris is going to practice some snaps, so apparently, obviously, a courageous effort in the first half if he was injured on the first play and never came out. Second down. Between six and seven. Ooh, Rice, good job of pulling the ball away from his fullback and coming back. It appeared to be a little bobble in there. This Herring makes the stop at the four, at the 49 of West Virginia, where it'll be third and four. Chance to watch the execution on that last play. You read on the first and then duck back inside. Rice trying to cut back against the grain, knowing how eager this West Virginia team is to get outside and stop him. Able to pick up a little bit of yardage there anyway. And tight end is on the left side. Two wide receivers to the right. He's liking uh, Derrick Brown. Oh, he's going to keep it this time. He cuts inside and he's nailed by Dale Jackson and Bo Orlando. And I don't think he picked it up. Looks like he's a yard short. And here comes the punting team on for Notre Dame. So West Virginia... That's something they accomplished only once in five possessions the first half, and that has stopped Notre Dame from scoring. Grantis Bell will be the return man for the Mountaineers. He's back at his 10-yard line as Jim Sexton, South Bend, Indiana walk-on, will punt it. Bell does not fair catch. And has a 11, 12 yard return out across the 20 yard line. So West Virginia desperately in need of a score. And Major Harris apparently will be the quarterback when we return. The Irish 23, the Mountaineers 6. Welcome back, Major Harris. This is the first quarter, the third play of this game. And this apparently is where he injured the left shoulder. Watch. Hit, knocked down by Alm and Stams. He's driven down on that left shoulder, and you see him wince and reach for that shoulder right there. Just moments ago, you see them adjusting. I'm sure as he's lifting that arm, he was having trouble lifting that arm. He was holding it tightly against his side in the last couple of series of the first half. He may have gotten a little help to block the pain in that shoulder in the locker room. And he comes out on the option, something we didn't see much of in that first half. And uh, trio of Irish tacklers. Bolkar was there first. West Virginia will trust the play calling to Dwight Wallace, who really selects the passing plays, and Mike Jacobs, who will basically, basically select the running plays. But this is tough with an injured quarterback who's been your main man. You've got to take him carefully. You don't want to get him hurt, but at the same time, you've got to get points on the board. He throws complete. And a first down at the 40-yard line to tight end Keith Wynn. 14 yards on the play. And you still see that arm staying down. He's not able to get that arm up very high. Pressure. 
Frank Stams. Good play right there, right past Rick Phillips, number 68. Ooh, and he threw him right on, well, actually, the other shoulder, the right shoulder. And I don't know that Notre Dame knows about this injury. They, they obviously are still playing football, which is their challenge. 10-22 left third quarter. Notre Dame has led throughout. Craig Taylor, the fullback, met by Wes Pritchett, the inside linebacker for the Irish, who reads poetry. I asked him who his favorite poet is, and Pritchett said, E.E. E. Cummings, as in, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. <laughs> well, having had a chance to visit with these Notre Dameers in South Bend, uh, I got a little uh, taste of Shakespeare the day I was there for a scrimmage. He is a character. He'll be drafted fairly high next uh, spring. Harris losing his footing, and there's the difference between grass and the artificial turf and the fact that Harris was operating in an area of the field where there is nothing much more than sand. Jeff Alm secured him. For four weekends, this stadium has hosted back-to-back -back professional and college games, and it tore the middle of this turf right out. And of course, you're right, Dick. That's painted dirt down there, and it does not hold the cleats like the artificial turf. Third and eight from the Mountaineers, 42. Stands putting on the pressure. Harris throwing into coverage and the interception by Pat Terrell. Pritchett, Gordon, and Stams were all after Harris making his life miserable on that pattern. And on the run, he finally had to dish it down the sidelines. And Terrell, who had two interceptions in the regular season, one for a touchdown against Miami, 60 yarder against the Hurricanes, picks this one off. Terrell moved to defense from a receiving position to take advantage of his speed. He is a receiver on that play. It's the Irish with the ball, timeout at their own 35. <laughs> Leftovers from uh, the holidays and to the new year. Part of the fans here cheering for Notre Dame. 35-yard line, the Irish after the interception by Pat Terrell, the first turnover of this Fiesta Bowl. The Irish with a 23-6 lead, and Tony Rice at the control. Wishbone, Rice keeps. Again, broke the initial hit from Mike Fox. Spun away and Lawrence Drumgoole and Dale Jackson had to get him uh, down at Pasadena. Two teams that Notre Dame beat during the regular season. It's USC leading Michigan at the half, 14 to three. Bo Schembechler looking for a rare win in Pasadena. Four and 11, his all-time record, but it's been leaner lately. Eight and a half to go, third quarter. And Rice looking for Green. He's open and he's got it at the 27-yard line. Bo Orlando caught up with a perfect throw by Rice. Lou Holtz has utilized the skills of this offensive team extremely well. This is a single pass option right here. He knows who he wants all the way down the sideline. Play action encourages Bo Orlando to stay up front just a little bit too long and green speed is the difference there as that ball hits the target first and 10. 35 yard play now Tony Brooks swings to the outside and has about 10 yards to the 16 yard line. Chris Herring finally tripped him up. Allen, that offensive line has done an outstanding job of opening holes and protecting Rice when he's needed it. Well, they certainly have, Dick. Dean Brown and Tim Grunhard, Mike Helt, Tim Gorman, not Tim Gorman, Tim Ryan in there, and Andy Heck. And this line, except for Heck, will be around next year. And they're probably going to be even tougher next year than they are this year. Only going to lose six starters from today's game. Double tight end, Frank Jacobs and Derek Brown. And it's the fullback, 22, Anthony Johnson. The first option inside the 15. Scott Summit, 73, made the tackle. Let's check some of the men up front for the Irish. You watch and see how many of the white shirts are moving backwards. That's Brown right there, just driving Herring off the ball. He's got him 10 yards back. 
sure you get some kind of award for that kind of blocking. Dean Brown from Canton. Alan Page, the great All-American Hall of Famer from Canton, Ohio. Migrated to the Irish campus. Flag down before the snap. Well, it's understandable. Folks, North, offense, still second down. Dean Brown is the strongest of that offensive line, a bench press of 425 pounds. He used both strength and size to drive Herring off the ball. You saw the man on the sidelines, Lou Holtz, who was born in West Virginia. And Farlands B. He said, don't know what would have happened to me, but for World War II, when my dad went off to war, we moved to Ohio and there went to a Catholic elementary school where we marched to the Notre Dame fight song every day. It was destiny. Brooks zigzagging for maybe a yard. Dale Jackson, the backup linebacker, has played a big game in the last two quarters. Here he comes, Jackson from also from Canton, Ohio, where he was the basketball center on the state champions. Well, let's go back and take a peek at Dean Brown. Well, again, he's got Chris Herring in his sights, and Herring has got to say, hey, why don't you go block on somebody else? Fella? Your own size. <laughs> Pick on somebody your own size. Brown is 283. Third down 10. And Rice keeps, and he has to eat it as Chris Parker, an all-east defensive tackle, makes the stop. He's a fifth-year senior from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Well, we've watched a couple of great blocks by Dean Brown, but he misses on this cutoff block, and his man will make the tackle as Chris Parker, who's made a third of his tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty remarkable for a defensive end. Makes a fine play there. Reggie Ho... The academic All-America. He's got a routine, a little magical touch with the fingers, and now his kick is good from 30 yards. Ho kicked four field goals in the opening season win against Michigan. Has his first today. It's 26 to six. West Virginia has three players out of this ball game. First of all, Jim Gray is out, middle guard. John Stroyer, the starting offensive guard, is out. And running back Andre Johnson is out. Replacing Stroyer in the starting lineup is Brian Hendricks, a senior from Maryland. So they have three players out of the ball game, and I know what Stroyer out of this game is going to affect that offensive line play. Well, that unit, five men who band together for so long, and you just take one man out, it has to be disturbing. So injury is part of the West Virginia story. You visited both uh, Morgantown and South Bend right after our final uh, NFL regular season. Merlin, uh, any impressions you can share with us? Well, I certainly was impressed with both campuses and both athletic programs and traveling back and getting a chance to drive through those beautiful mountains back into Morgantown. I meet a lot of friendly people. I tell you, they, they greeted me. That, that's like going home to me, getting back to the mountains <laughs> and folks that will sit down and look you in the eye and talk with you very friendly welcome I got great respect for what they're doing back there West Virginia's program Hackett approaches the ball and here comes under Johnson actually Tim Williams number 24 under Johnson 34 is one of those injured and Andre Jones the uh, Linebacker has been a major force here on special teams, just pounding people and knocking them down today. Major Harris, who looked a bit sharper in the first possession, but then was intercepted as he was pressured out of the pocket. What a talent he is. Play action to A.B. Brown, and then the toss to the wide open fullback Craig Taylor who backpedals out of bounds at the 33-yard line, a gain of seven. Grantis Bell, wide receiver, all alone downfield by himself, but not spotted by Major Harris on that play. And I've got to say that with an injury, particularly one to your shoulders, that's got to bother your rhythm. The ability to run, the ability to pick things out downfield, and one of the strengths that Major Harris had demonstrated 
throughout his two years of playing as a starter for this offense is the ability to scramble, get that extra piece of time. Second and three. And again, open is Taylor. Same play to the other side, and Taylor bowls his way to the 50. I understand that uh, Johnson and Knee and Gray and Stroya suffered concussions and Harris a left shoulder injury. Six to six. The Mountaineers with a long climb to get back into this one. We have five minutes left in the third quarter. Harris keeps. And then is caught from behind. Chris Zorich showing you his speed. 4-6-8 to get Harris from the backside. The sophomore. Unusual to find nose tackles who can control in the center of the line and then flatten out in pursuit with that kind of agility. That's a fine play by the sophomore nose tackle. Zorro, they call him. And he had to sign up for extra classes in, as a senior in Chicago to make sure he met the requirements to get into Notre Dame. That's where he wanted to go. Harris drills that one over the head of a tight end win, and a flag is down. He may have roughing the passer on Wes Pritchett. And that's exactly what we're going to have. Two dead ball fouls contributed to the first drive that got three points for West Virginia. Richard saying, what did I do? <laughs> well, we'll take a peek Run and see what Pritchett did. Defense, automatic first down. Ball is gone. Ooh, oh, yes. Man, that's oh, yes. a mean pop. Well, mean. well, they're showing that one on the screen here, and obviously the folks... They'll like it. That's a good 15-yard penalty to be sure. 32-yard line, they mark it after the foul. 4.25 left in the third period. West Virginia trailing by 20 points, 26 to 6. A draw play that A.B. Brown swings to the outside, doesn't get much. 27-yard line there again Merlin even at those moments and there have been four or five when a West Virginia ball carrier saw a little daylight boom blue jerseys we talked about the choice that Lou Holtz made when he came to Notre Dame he said the one thing we don't have is enough speed he went out and recruited speed Zorich being held inside that's Koken the center able to lock him up but look how quickly they get Avery Brown going sideways and Smagala who's got more speed than the fine tailback right there waiting for him. So a play that looked as if it would go much longer gets only four yards and then this quick pop by Taylor, a man who has not lost a yard in two seasons at West Virginia and interestingly had 77 tries both years. The last two years, no one ever knocked him down for a loss. This will be third and three as you see the vital statistics late in the third quarter. Alvin Phillips, who has not caught a pass, had 24 to lead the Mountaineers, comes out to the left. Rembert is with him. Harris just does get away. And then shows his speed and out of bounds at the 16 with a first down. Don Grimm was the man who almost caught Harris for a loss. And Major Harris at 207 pounds shows you why he has star written all over. Not only that great arm of his, but what speed to escape. He also has incredibly powerful legs. And that's what usually allows a running back to get out of tackles like that. Little pump, and he is pumping that arm. And if he's doing so with that injured shoulder, you got to believe there's a lot of pain in that body right now. Looks to the end zone, has a man open. Grant for a touchdown. Gladys Bell. Flag is down. It may have been a dead ball foul. It looked like it was thrown after the pat was after the pass was caught. He spiked the ball. Maybe that's what it is. So Harris finds Gladys Bell for the score.
A personal foul apparently for a hit after the touchdown. No, for the spike. We'll see uh, we'll against see. whom he wasn't. Uh, Bauman tries the extra point. And it's 26 to 13. Well, Major Harris returns and the Mountaineers applaud. Well, we now can tell you that it was a foul against Notre Dame. Watch as Bell catches the touchdown pass. Todd Light comes over, gives him a shove, and the flag flies. But this is what they have been hoping for here in the West Virginia section all afternoon. And I'm sure all the troops down at Crockett's finally getting a chance to cheer in Morgantown. They'll also have an opportunity here, and with the 15-yard penalty, perhaps an opportunity, Dick, to go ahead and try the onside kick. You don't lose much. Ball is spotted at the 50-yard line when you're down by 13, late in the third. There's three minutes and 32 seconds left in the period. It is an option for Nealon. Meanwhile, Ismail said, well, then I'd only have to return one 100 and some instead of 80-some. Uh, He's the deep man. Now your choice is simply to try and rip it out of the end zone and trust in your defense or to go after the onside kick and let's see what Don Nealon has decided to do. It's interesting Lou Holtz who believes that the special team set the tempo for the entire game. He puts his two top fullbacks Braxton Banks and Anthony Johnson. They're the wingmen in front of Ismail and he says hey I'm thinking that way too. Watch that. out for the that onside is. kick. Nope. That's going all the way out. Ismail won't have a chance. And it's a touchback out to the 20 yard line. Yeah, Bull car on the ground on that play. Quickly back up. Scoring drive. Well, good news for West Virginia. Didn't take him long, two minutes. As Harris was three for three passing on the drive and the payoff, a 17 yard throw to Grantis Bell. And what Don Nealon and his West Virginia coaches are saying right now is now we need to pounce on them defensively and convincingly turn the momentum of this game back in our direction. And boy, there's an emotional coach. He's saying that's the first step. Now let's see what we can do with the defense. Rice hands off to Green, and he's hit in the backfield for a loss. Number 61, Mike Fox, and 93, Dale Jackson. You know, many fans, both sides, West Virginia, Notre Dame, gave up Christmas to spend their money to come out and see this battle for number one. And there are literally hundreds here that uh, this is their Christmas present, to see these two teams play in person. Rice faking, then going down the middle to Brooks. Intercepted by Willie Edwards. Edwards at the 30. Edwards at the 26-yard line, and West Virginia on its feet. And you saw Lou Holt saying to Tony Rice as he came to the sideline, it's all right. It's all right. He's got a young team. They have had trouble sustaining their scoring in the second half. But right now, the defense that has been so dominant in the early going in this game, backed up, needs to rise to the occasion. For West Virginia, it's very simple. They've got to get into the end zone. Again, Rice going down the middle, and this time Edwards was laying and waiting from the 26. First turnover for West Virginia, and Harris now. And he'll have to eat it. Half the Notre Dame team gets him at the 27-yard line. A loss of one or two. All of his receivers were over on the left side, so when he was pump faking, there just was no one there to deliver the ball. Harris brings him out of the huddle. Phillips left. Remberg right. Harris looking for Phillips. He's covered well. Now he throws long for Bell. 
Oh, oh, what a defensive play by Stan Smagala. Reaching in and knocking a touchdown away. Meanwhile, Wes Pritchett was the man harassing the quarterback. You get a feeling for the kind of power that Major Harris has in that arm. He can kneel down on one knee and whip that football 50 yards. That one in the air a long distance. But it is indeed a beautiful defensive play. Look at that arm right up inside and knocking that ball away. Now, Grandis Bell flirting with two touchdowns here late in the third quarter. Exactly two minutes remaining in the third. West Virginia down 23 to 6 and then 26 to 6 early in the third has scored a touchdown in the third quarter and now another chance except Harris has to eat it at the 42 yard line George Williams and Frank Stams Arnold Ali Ali 97 is in there Ali a true freshman He's had trouble keeping his weight up during the season. Gone from 207 down under 200 pounds. There he is, top of your screen. He and Stam's both coming in with great heat. And that's a sandwich there. No one back for Notre Dame, so the interception by Edwards produces nothing. And, and now Carrion will try to drop it inside the 20. He oh. hits this one into the end zone. Trying to pooch it. And just got too much on it. It'll come out to the 20. Well, Notre Dame survives the interception. And boy, they're really patting the defense on the back on the far side. A dejected Major Harris. An opportunity lost. The interception by Edwards to the Notre Dame 26. The first break for the Mountaineers today. But they wind up in a deficit pool and have to punt it into the end zone. Well, I'm sure the message to Major was much like the message that Holtz gave to Rice. It's all right. We've still got time left to go. Dwight Wallace at the other end of that phone saying, Mage, we can still score some points. Right now, the pressure shifts back to West Virginia's defense. They were so inspirational a few moments ago. Let's, still, let's see if they've still got that fire, Dick. But the emotional swing when West Virginia made the interception. And you could feel their sidelines lift. But then the defense of Notre Dame produces an equal result for the Irish fans and teammates. The toss to Mark Green. Runs into his own man. Blocker Frank Jacobs was the man who stopped Green. He was pushed uh, by the defender Chris Parker who set up the play with his charge. Parker, an all-east performer. That very distinctive logo on the sides of the helmets. One of the changes that Don Nealon brought with him to West Virginia. At, at WV, VW, WV. Don't do WV. <laughs> they wouldn't fit in the VW. That's almost, a, that's almost become a, a statewide symbol for West Virginia. The pride they have in this team. On second down, it's green again. Pursued, and you have the feeling after the interception that Lou Holtz isn't going to throw unless it's a very safe pass. You see the clean golden dome on these Notre Damers. When Holtz went to Notre Dame, he said, I think we ought to put an ND on the helmet. And they had to very carefully explain to him, Coach, that's a replica of the golden dome. There is no ND on the golden dome. And there uh, is some gold, uh, actual gold within the paint they use on those helmets. Has been for a long time. Student managers spend a lot of time shining those helmets up and making them look bright for a day like today. 15 minutes for the national championship and number one Notre Dame leads 26 to 13. We open the fourth quarter. The commander of the Notre Dame ship, Lou Holtz, knows how to win. If he's in the lead going into the fourth since he's been at Notre Dame in three years, his teams have won all 21 of those games. He leads 26 to 13. And it's the Irish ball at their own 23, third down and seven. And a draw, and Rice has the first down and more out to the 39-yard line. Back Ryan and Heck open the hole. 16 yards for Rice. Orlando made the tackle. You attack a defense in so many ways. When you know that they're eager to respond, they're keyed emotionally, you simply give them the chance to rush the passer, and in essence, they create the hole for you with some fine blocking inside. 
Andy Heck, or Mike Hecht in particular, doing a good job of sealing off on the strong side on Parker. Now Rice back to throw. Has a man wide open. Out of bounds goes Ricky Waters inside the five-yard line. Now, Lou Holtz, back in the spring, wanted to put Mark Green at flanker to replace Tim Brown. At the last minute, he changed his mind, put Waters, another tailback out there. Well, and we remind you again, it was Waters and Brooks who were sent home from that critical game at SC. They wanted so badly to prove themselves here today. Well, their coach, their coach had said to them, if you can't hug them and pat them and on the back and brag on them, you don't want them on your team. Well, you can sure do that of both of those guys here in their performance today. Waters 15 catches led the Irish during the regular season. First and goal. And a yard or two for Pat Eilers, who is the wide receiver operating out of that wishbone. Just took the toss. Eilers from St. Paul, Minnesota. A vicious downfield blocker. And as a kid, he competed downhill in the Junior Olympic slalom. Well, it's all downhill, at least in the eyes of some of the Notre Dame fans, as they've got a chance to build on the 26-13 lead. One of the things that Notre Dame has not done, in spite of what you saw about winning in the fourth quarter, you look at the point production heavily oriented in the first half. That might provide some hope for West Virginia fans, but mostly they're concerned now, get some points on the board yourself. Fullback Braxton Banks has stopped after about a half-yard game. One of the reasons, though, that uh, they have scored a low total in the fourth quarter, of course, is way ahead in games. Uh, they take so some people out of the game. Absolutely true. The one thing that I would think would be encouraging to West Virginia, they have been an excellent fourth quarter team. They need right now to deny this touchdown. Their defense stomping its feet down there and so far putting together a pretty good stand. Third down. Let's see what... Holtz has in mind for West Virginia's defense. Waters to the right. He's the man who caught the 57-yard pass. The fake, the throw, the touchdown to Frank Jacobs, who caught only one pass all year for Notre Dame. He's got one for a touchdown in the Fiesta Bowl. Lou Holtz, such a master when it comes to utilizing his players, rarely throws in that kind of situation. Very conservative when he gets inside the 20, and I'm sure that West Virginia, well aware of that, was thinking run. They did not get run. They got play-action pass. You can see Rice's basketball talent displayed from that angle. That was like a perfect little jump shot. He passed in to Jacobs. Now they're going to go for the two-point play, as their lead has been at 20 points. They want at least... Uh, Try to put some uh, added distance on the West Virginia Mountaineers. Rice keeps, and does he get in? Yes. He lurched forward and able to get the ball. And that was the only thing that got in the end zone, but that's what counts. The two-pointer is good, and it's now 34-13. So that makes up for that extra point that they lost after their first touchdown back in the opening quarter. I'm out. Here's that last touchdown. Tony Rice up for the jumper. Little nice soft follow through with the wrist. And that is worth six. And then Rice takes care of the uh, two free throws and they get eight points out of it. It's 34-13. Excuse me, Dick. Rice, 7 for 10 on the day, 213 yards, two touchdowns. And Holt said earlier in the week, and I think he was tired of questions about Rice's passing ability, he said if I didn't think he could throw, he'd be practicing his back pedal and covering the out pattern. Well, <laughs> let's talk about it later, folks. You don't have to ask many questions about that kind of day, do you? Well, he's uh, working on a tough budget, so he says that's a Christmas present and a birthday present for his mom, who celebrates in Woodruff, South Carolina today. Tony Rice, an outstanding afternoon. Meanwhile, Michigan has pulled within five of Southern California in the third quarter of the Rose Bowl. 21-point lead with that two-point conversion. Now Eugene Napoleon. 
Jones and others making Andre Jones making the tackle number seven. That was a big touchdown drive. Boy, the momentum did shift after the interception in West Virginia, unable to convert 80 yards, seven plays. Major Harris still on the field. They're lined up for a quick start here offensively. The key to that last drive, of course, was the 57-yard pass from Rice to Waters. Watch out, Stams. Boy, he finds a way to come in on that backside. Ash Pete at Southern California in Walsh at Miami. Stams and Pritchard, we mentioned that they, along with Stonebreaker, three amigos, Boy, I tell you, they have made their presence felt today. Stonebreaker's been out because of sickness today, but Pritchard and Stamps have really been a thorn in the side all day long. And they get him again. This time it's George Williams, 69. The 282-pound lineman. Well, they know that West Virginia has to pass, and Major Harris under heavy heat. That's a defensive lineman's dream when you've got a quarterback back there that's got to throw the football. And the Stams again who cut off the opposite path. In the backside. Draw play. And then A.B. stays on his feet. A.B. Brown from Salem, New Jersey. I think maybe he picked up the... No. <laughs> Another stab. I was going to say, I see a yard marker, but it's the wrong one, and we'll have the punt team. We're talking about those three amigos. Stams a printer, they keep teasing Reggie Ho. They tell him if he doesn't do what they want him to do, they're going to marry his sister. They, he's going to have him in the family for the rest of his life. <laughs> they're a couple of wild men. She's a, one of the assistant trainers on this team. Carrion. This one not a perfect spiral. A low line drive. The waters. Got away from Grant. And finally bumped out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Keith Wynn, number 81, with a tackle. Timeout. Notre Dame, 34, West Virginia, 13. Major Harris and the hopes of the Mountaineers and their fans from West Virginia have been smothered by a brilliant game performance by the Irish of Notre Dame who have moved the ball effectively offensively and have been very tough on defense. And Tony Rice who put some extra ribbon on that present for his mother's birthday. Mark Green. For 11 yards and a first down at the 46 summits in Orlando make the tackle. Lou Holtz who runs that veer so often down in red territory inside the 20 and 10 yard line a short yardage coming out and establishing the strength of that offense here at a time when he wants to control the football. Well, it was Lou Holtz who had his own idol growing up in Ohio as a Notre Dame fan. He was a quarterback. He wore number 32, Johnny Lujak. All-America led uh, the Irish to two national championships in the mid-40s. Brooks, short yardage. In fact, he said, I always wanted to wear a 32 if it was available. I wasn't big enough to fight it, <laughs> many to get it. He only weighs 147 now. He said he's lost five pounds during the season. And I sat next to him at the Heisman uh, banquet in New York, and he ate everything they put down. I can't believe. He says, I just eat when I'm hungry. And he seems to eat a lot, but doesn't gain weight. Some of the writers have teased him about looking like an anorexic little Dutch boy. <laughs> and he is a nervous man. He must burn off incredible amounts of energy moving up and down that sideline. Fullback gets the call. Banks this time, and he's into West Virginia territory before Ron Ellis can make the tackle. Dick, we talked early in the ball game. The the great strength of this West Virginia team. They have so many 
dedicated lifters who work so hard to build their strength and on the other side a team that works on strength but has concentrated more on speed and I think in part because of the kind of athletes they've been able to attract Lou Holtz with his great ability to to recruit and to go out and reach has been able to find those very quick athletes and speed does kill and uh, maybe even perhaps as Bear Bryant said luck does follow speed because the Irish have been lucky with their fast players today Play action and Rice throwing incomplete to Brown. He won't drop many. Derrick Brown, who had some big catches in the first half, this uh, pure freshman from Merritt Island, Florida. 